On this James the Bike Guy, we're checking out the 2021 Fuji Nevada 1.3. This is a pretty well-specced Fuji bike that goes up against the likes of the Trek Marlin, the Giant Talon, and the Specialized Rock Hopper. But for 2021, this has a pretty nice part spec and a fork I've never quite seen before. But more on that later. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, stick around and let's go over the specs features and finally find out exactly what this bike weighs. The Fuji Nevada series is designed to be a very versatile hardtail mountain bike. So in the grand scheme of things, this is a more entry-level mountain bike, although the spec we're looking at here is one down from the very best they have in this line. So it has some features you'd expect on a more mid-level bike. It has a pretty conservative geometry to it, which allows this bike to be versatile for both mountain biking and getting into XC and flow trails, but also to be able to be used as a commuter, a rig to be able to go out on vacation, maybe something to go to school with, and just overall be a very useful bike. Of course, that means that the Fuji Nevada series is gonna go up against bikes like the Trek Marlin, the Specialized Rock Hopper, and the Giant Talon. And where Fuji really shines is often by having one of the better specs at each individual price point. The Nevada is made out of Fuji's A2 SL aluminum, which is Fuji's way of saying it's a custom budded alloy frame. It's gonna have pretty nice welds, an inch and an eighth head tube, internal cable routing, a nice quick release 30.9 seat post diameter. And then out back, it's gonna have things like rack mounts. So you can attach a rack into these eyelets up here and there. It also has a spot for fenders if you wanted to add that to the bike. And the frame is utilizing quick release 135 millimeter hubs out back with a threaded bottom bracket in the center, and then up front, 100 millimeters of suspension travel. So 100 millimeters of travel is gonna put this squarely into the XC category, and it's being controlled by a fork I haven't seen before. This is called a Spinner 300S. This is the 29er version of the fork. It's also available in 27.5. So because I haven't seen this fork before, I did a bit of research on it before doing this video. And it seems to be a fairly interesting Taiwanese suspension fork company that does have a distributor in the US called Spinner USA. But it's pretty neat because it's all alloy lowers. It has an aluminum crown up top, an aluminum steer tube that goes through the inside, and then it's got steel stanchions, which is a pretty good spec for a more basic fork. And even more onto that, it's gonna be coil spring, meaning you've got a adjustment here to make it firmer or softer with this preload adjuster. And then on the other side, where you'd normally have your lever to be able to control the shock, that's now relocated as a remote on the handlebar. So it's pretty neat because you can press down there, which is gonna lock out the fork. So the 100 millimeters of suspension travel is totally locked out. And then if you click it up, it's gonna open up the front end so that you'll be able to have the compression. And that's pretty nice to have, especially with a bike that's gonna be able to do varied riding. Because if you're on smoother roads, pavement, uh, or even a nice climb when you're mountain biking, it's nice to lock out the front end to get the most efficiency. And then just with a quick click on the handlebar, you can open it up and have your suspension again. For geometry, this bike is gonna be a bit conservative, running a 69 degree head tube angle, a 73 degree seat tube angle, and then a chainstay length of 450 millimeters. None of those are gonna be progressive or blow your socks off, but it makes for a very stable and solid bike for a varied types of terrain. Cockpit wise, we're gonna be all Fuji and all aluminum using this nice wide alloy handlebar. This is a flat 31.8 bar clamp alloy handlebar that has 710 millimeters of width. Then it's connected to the fork using this Fuji aluminum stem rocking a six degree rise. And then out back, a 30.9 Fuji alloy seat post with a two bolt adjustment for angle on the saddle. And then you're perched on the WTB Volt saddle. This is the 142 millimeter width and nicely done. It's color spec to match up with the wheels and the rest of the bike. Componentry on this bike is where it's gonna really shine. 
using Shimano's Deor rear derailleur. So this Deor drivetrain is a one by drivetrain, meaning it's got one speed up front and then 11 in back. So this is a place where it's gonna shine against the competitors. In most cases, you're seeing other bikes with the Deor one by 10, but instead we're one by 11, utilizing the super wide range 11 to 50 tooth rear cassette. So that 11 to 50 tooth rear cassette is gonna give nearly the same range you would have had with a two by nine drivetrain, but now with shifting only in the back end. And then the derailleur itself is pretty slick on its own because this Deor derailleur is gonna be clutched. So by clutch, inside of this is gonna be a mechanism that helps control the cage so it doesn't flex forward. And when it flexes forward, you'll notice the chain kind of bounces all around and then you get the noise when it rattles against the frame. But you click that up, all of a sudden this is locked out. So even pressing pretty hard down onto the chain, it's not contacting the frame. And then it's gonna help keep it controlled on this narrow wide chain ring that's 30 teeth in diameter mounted up on the FSA Gamma Pro crankset. The crankset runs through Mega Exo threaded bottom bracket and utilizes some Welgo platform pedals. Wheels and tires are pretty slick on the bike with the WTB SX19 rims. These are an alloy double walled rim, 19 millimeters of internal width, mounted up with some WTB Ranger 29 by 2.25 tires. This is a bit on the narrower side compared to some of the other ones out there, but it's got a faster XC rolling tread pattern, so it should be good on hard pack and lightly loose surfaces but also be a good option on paved surfaces as well. The actual weight of the Fuji Nevada, 1.3 comes in and weighs 31.24 pounds. Thanks for watching this video on the Fuji Nevada 1.3. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as don't forget to subscribe so that way you can see more videos like this in the future.